Honorable Sam Rainsy, Chairman, Council of Asian Liberals and Democrats, the Honorable Narika Costa, Secretary General, Carl, Dr. Reina Adam, Regional Director, Friedrich Nauman Foundation, Mr. Jufri Mahmoud, Chairman, Singapore Democratic Party, esteemed delegates of Carl, colleagues, dear friends. I am always inspired when I find myself in the company of committed and able servants of justice and human rights. This morning I am exceptionally inspirited because I see so many familiar faces who have served freedom's cause so valiantly. The Tiogong Sumura, Narek, Yang Meishin, Sam Rangsi himself, and others. It never fails to encourage me when I am in their presence. <laughs> We are met here today not to extol the virtues of democracy, for we have done this many times before. Instead, we are here to study how we can address the challenges, the fundamental freedoms that are the bulwark against tyranny, and in so doing, empower our people. And to this end, the Council of Asian Liberals and Democrats, of which the Singapore Democratic Party is a proud member, has in no small measure contributed to the changed and changing political topography in Asia. Twenty years ago, when like-minded Asians came together to caucus the idea of liberal democracy, freedom was just another word, and justice had little form. Back then, much of Asia was under authoritarian control. But in the span of two decades, many <coughs> democracy activists have realized the dream of seeing the richness of democracy and human rights come to their lands. Korea, Taiwan, the Philippines, Indonesia, just to name a few countries, have taken that bold step and entered into the world of free countries. Even our colleagues in Burma seem to have crossed that Rubicon of freedom. Malaysia also undergoing the birth pangs of democracy. Now, many of these democracy leaders have found a home in Nepal, but these developments did not occur by happenstance. They came about because of perseverance and sacrifice by leaders who cared and dared to defy those who would persecute them. Just a few years ago, just years ago, the Kim Dae Jones, the Benigno Aquinos, the Aung San Suu Kyi's were imprisoned and humiliated, but they soldiered on always believing in the rightness and inevitability of their cause. They have distinguished themselves from politicians who would cry, tell me where my people have gone so that I may catch up and leave. No, these people acted on principle, not popularity. Their paths to freedom were narrow and lonely, but through courage and dedication, they widened these paths to broad avenues of democracy where their fellow citizens now travel. In Singapore, we have often wondered when our time will come. But we have done more than just wonder. We, the Singapore Democrats, have worked to widen the political space in our country with one and only one hope to make more secure the future of our fellow citizens. I am therefore glad to report that something too is happening in my country. The people are beginning to stir. The spirit seems to have been awakened. There is a chorus in the air, and that chorus is crying out for change. On February 16, 5,000 people gathered at the Speaker's Corner to protest the government's plans to increase the population size to unthinkable levels. This may seem unremarkable, especially in countries accustomed to public gatherings. But remember, this is Singapore, where for the past half a century, state propaganda has seared into our minds that protests are not only illegal, but they bring about turmoil and chaos that would undo all that we have achieved. For decades, we have been taught by one teacher under one school 
that democracy and its attendant freedoms are a danger to economic growth. With the GDP sprinting ahead year after year, there was an argument that found receptive ears, and democracy was banished to the wilderness. There are still many people, even those who want to see change in Singapore, who continue to think that matters like political freedoms and civil liberties are esoteric concepts, far removed from the everyday life. Human rights cannot make me better off is the common refrain. They have never been more wrong. I had wanted a book that I wrote in 1994 that, in quote, in the absence of debate, the dangers of misguided and ill-conceived policies are not exposed and corrected, unquote. Such misguided policy has come in the form of the government flooding this tiny island with foreign workers and transfusing the Singaporean population with non-Singaporeans. But because there was no debate, no democracy, we find ourselves in a parallel state today where our way of life and well-being have come under threat by a government insistent on overpopulating this island. As a result, younger Singaporeans cannot afford even public housing. Older Singaporeans don't have enough savings for a time. Six Singaporeans find it hard to afford health care. Working Singaporeans work longer and harder for less and less. Poor Singaporeans become homeless. And skilled Singaporeans emigrate by the thousands. And even though we have registered GDP growth for at a blistering pace, we find ourselves, according to a recent worldwide survey, being the unhappiest people in the world. These problems did not emerge recently. They took years, even decades, to develop. Without an effective opposition, and without the ability of the people to converge in protest, the PAP continued with its wayward policy until today we find ourselves in danger of being displaced in our very own country. The reality is that the deprivation of our rights has denied us what we really want, which is to live a little bit more comfortably, to retire with a little more security, and to work a little less stressfully. It is because we have been sure of our rights that the government has been able to enrich itself at the people's expense, while it stores hundreds of billions of dollars in its reserves. Singaporeans live with little financial security. And even as the SDP continues to focus on cost of living issues, proposing ways to reduce health care costs, coming up with ideas to lower HDB prices, fighting for minimum wage for our workers and so on, we would be negligent if we did not at the same time educate the Singaporean public on the importance of our political rights. The real hard truth is that without political freedom, our economic rights are as solid as warm butter. Exercising our freedoms, especially the freedom of assembly, must not be seen as taboo. Peaceful protests are necessary and righteous means with which people can speak truth to power, to hold their leaders accountable, and to compel the government to act in their interest. Without our fundamental freedom, we cannot hope to bring about change. I am heartened to see that Singaporeans' views about public assembly and protests are beginning to change. The idea that our rights are inviolate and cannot be traded away in the stock market is an idea that has been neglected for too long. Democracy is an idea whose time has come. The idea of a people tired of living in fear and exploitation, of a citizenry who want to be empowered, of a society vibrant and intelligent. It is an idea that looms large and imminent on the horizon of this nation. But the road to freedom is long and fraught with unknowns. The challenges to fundamental freedoms are many. We must persevere not let our vision, our dream of building our democracy be hijacked 
and the whole thing. There is one big obstacle, there, and that is our mind. I have said this before, and I will say it again. Our biggest battle is not against the PAP. It is against what the PAP has done to our minds. To this end, the SDP pledges to be at the front pointing the way. To be at the side fighting with and alongside our people. To be at the back, encouraging those who cannot see the urgency of reform. We need to be that rock that Singaporeans can lean on when they are weary, that fountain when they thirst for support, that flame when all else around them seem to be cloaked in the bleakness of a one-party state. We stand ready to work with civil society and our fellow citizens to effect change. Our common conviction, our common devotion, our common faith are our biggest weapons. Let us wield them with prowess and fortitude. We must use public assembly to reform our election system, to free the media, and to rid ourselves of the detested Internal Security Act. If we can unfetter the chains that cripple our minds, then we can empower Singaporeans. Empowering Singaporeans is the biggest goal of the SDP. For if we succeed, we will build a nation that is strong and secure, a nation that is ready for the future, and most of all, one that belongs to the people. Empowered Singaporeans are people who will stand just a little bit tall and whose souls will be just a little bit richer. And so my friends, I thank you for giving me the privilege of traveling the long road of democracy with you. It's been 20 years since we came together as Asian liberals and Democrats and I know you well. I know that you will not waver in your stand for what is just and right. Your creed is never to bow down before injustice and oppression. And only when the vision of a democratic Asia is realized will Asia, in the words of my good friend Martin Lee, cease to be merely a large conflict but become a true great For it is only with the presence of freedom and justice can nature bestow upon humankind true happiness. Thank you.